I guess there are lots of reasons why someone would become religious. You know, it's 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 easy to to become religious. Um, sociologists and psychologists could talk about the social bonding um, and the comfort in in groupthink or mob mentality, depending on the size of the congregation. But the the compassion that that you find in complete strangers, the sense of belonging, the affirmation of ideas without question. When you're in that setting, you're you're in a a group, a, a tribe. You know, uh, we're social creatures. We seek pleasure and avoid pain. Um, and when you have a large enough group of people that would lift you up and say all the wonderful things that you want to hear. Um, you tend to ignore the the possibility of of doubt. You know, of of maybe this isn't this isn't right or this isn't real. You know, um, it it was a happiness pill that I seemingly had no good reason not to take. So I began to uh, to read the Word, um, you know, and fill my toolbox with with phrases and scriptures and little scripts and things to say uh, when questioned about the lost, you know. And gradually, I learned I learned not to to try to reason difficult things out, you know, because well, first of all, the devil can get you that way, and uh, you know, second of all, you you just I just gotta learn to have faith, you know. You just just gotta learn to. Uh, I needed to learn how how to take certain things without question, you know, without doubt. Just just have faith. Just believe. Now I, I play the drums, and uh, I became our church's drummer. Um, you gotta remember, this is a tiny, tiny little church, you know, full of old people. <laughs> and there I am banging around on my massive ten piece set, drowning out the organ. Um now I was raised on eighties rock and so you know the, the slow, soft rhythms of Amazing Grace and all the other old time church songs just really didn't cut it for me sometimes, <laughs> you know, you just you just have to bust out sometimes. But um and that's another topic that, that, that can fill volumes. I mean, music as an element of persuasion and control. I mean, I got the band pumped, you know. I got the crowd on their feet. Uh, fast songs and slow, sweet songs. You know, highs and lows. You know, Music is very powerful that way. Um, you get them excited, adrenaline flowing, um, energized and then and then you pull them back and and suddenly there's this little window that opens up where people are susceptible to to almost anything at that point um it's 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 really subtle and and in in certain environment in certain environments uh it it just it just works um you know people believe almost anything, you know. Oh, uh, a man talked to a snake, you say, and it and it talked back. Wow, okay. Uh, you know, a guy lived in the stomach of a whale. Hmm, okay. You know, it... it I'm not saying that, that every... that every church or every band knowingly does this and, and is, is trying to, uh... to, uh to open this little window of, of susceptibility up on purpose. Um, at least not purposeful lying. I don't, I don't, I don't think any, many churches um, are actually actively lying to people, you know, that people really believe this stuff. Um, I know I did. As I kept coming back and uh, learning how to mimic the faithful around me, I became more open about testifying to my friends and 
those visiting the church services, um, you know, spreading the love of Jesus. Um, I've always been a, a quiet, sort of out-of-the-way person, and uh, with this whole faith thing, I sort of found strength in a voice, you know. It's easy to do when, when you're talking to uh, to someone who wants to hear it, you know, who's who is who shares your delusion. Um, not so much when people think you're crazy. You know? I even received a, a special gift from God, uh, speaking in tongues. That's right, me, the small town atheist, actually spoke in tongues on several occasions. Um, since leaving the church, I've been able to uh, been able to see how this behavior has had its roots in mimicking those around you, and especially those you trust, those in your tribe. Um, I can I can now look back and and sort of remember when we would go to uh, to a church rally or a big youth conference or something, and and you know you'd see you'd see. Uh, all the all the members of 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 one church huddled together, all speaking in tongues, and we'd be all huddled together speaking in tongues, and we wouldn't sound the same. I mean, we'd sound the same within our own groups, but we wouldn't; those groups wouldn't sound the same. And I've even been able to duplicate the uh, to duplicate the glossolalia whenever, anytime I'm in sort of an environment where. I'm extremely excited, and my adrenaline's pumping, and something. If 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 I if I felt like it, I I could do it, um, which is just so happens to sort of be the type of environment that our church was in. You know, the the uh, the uh, the holy roller type. You know. For about three years, I kept playing for the church and reading the Bible and paying attention in sermons. Um, I'm a computer programmer now, and uh, you know I I have a very logical mind. Um, it you know learning how to uh, to think like a computer, you know, really sort of gives you that 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 logical mind. And I pay close attention to detail now, much much closer than than I ever did as a teenager. You know, being a part of a small congregation, um, you get to hear all the gossip, you know, you get to know people's lives and, and, and know what goes on outside of church, and, you know, I mean, I was, I was really close friends with our youth pastor who became our pastor, and, and his wife and his children, um, and some other members of the church, you know, I mean, like I said, we're, we're a small congregation, so, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to, to get that way. When our, our youth pastor eventually uh, became our pastor. He he promised all kinds of of uh, wonderful, great things for the church. You know, he was going to move my he was going to move my drum kit up to up on the altar. You know, uh, it was sort of sitting in the corner. You know, as far back from the front rows as possible. You know, and uh, but yeah, we were going to put it up there, and we were going to totally redo the the altar and just a whole bunch of stuff really and um one day he uh, decided that uh, god had told him to take up another pastoring job in in another town and uh this this really sucked you know the this devastated uh, our our congregation i think many many people quit after that um of course, we were heartbroken. We were heartbroken, but um, you know, he kept insisting that it's God's will. It's God's will, and and please don't, please don't write back and and tell me that I've lost my faith because the the pastor was duped by the devil, or you know that I'm just angry at God for his decisions. You know, don't give me that bullshit. Um, because it wasn't just the pastor leaving. Uh, that caused me to uh, eventually lose my faith. Um, it was, it was much more than that. 